Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and well, some of you might know, some of you don't, but I'm a professional game developer, and I just wanted to share with you my setup for when I make multiplayer games and I test them and so on, so what's my beginning setup to make everything as comfortable as possible to work with? Now, first things first, this is a completely empty URP project. I've done absolutely nothing. I've just started the project. I just didn't want YouTube to have and sit and wait for the loading time. So first thing that I always do is just I, did, I remove all these beginning little things that I don't need, and then I move on to just setting up some of the folders that are requirements. You guys are probably very familiar with this kind of setup except i always write underscores in front of the folders that i need the most so something like my scripts something like my prefabs i need that a lot something like my materials i might not need a lot so i don't write underscore in front of it so i just always have these sort of basic folders here now obviously one of the most important things is that you need to import the stuff that you're going to be working with so of course i'm going to import fishnet because well i work with multiplayer programming i'm just going to double click on that and then import fishnet now another thing that i also always do is actually i make a plugins folder now the plugins are for everything that i import I put in here. So I'm also going to, so let's actually move fishnet into the plugins folder. Now some things already come to, with the plugins folder. Also when you move fishnet you're going to get an, an, a DLL error. That's just because Unity doesn't refresh properly so you can just close and open Unity again. But I'm also going to go to the package manager and for my sake I would also use some of the packages in here so I could go to my asset, find the assets, import them and put them into the plugins folder as well. Now the next thing for your setup that you might need is Parallelsync. This is really essential for working with multiplayer game development. It's not really something I I've showcased much before i've shown that i use it but i haven't actually showcased it as a standalone so i'm also going to put that into the plugins folder and i'm just going to give unity a quick restart before we move any further to well avoid these issues now as for peril sync uh, the link will be in the description but you can also just always go on google and just search for peril sync he'll be the top then you go to releases find the newest release i don't think he there's really being released anymore anyway but i want you to go find it yourself to get the newest version and then you just download the unity package right here and you can just double click that just like i did now back in the project we now have this setup where we have fishnet and peril sync and whatever that you might else need in here so this way we can keep sort of the root assets folder out here very clean now the next thing is of course i set up my basic scene here so i tend to just go in and grab the network manager as in my original tutorial however one thing that i do a little bit different is i want to delete the network hot canvas i'm going to remove that then i'm just going to go here and let's say that i'm just using the free version so i'll just use tugboat since i'm using the pro version i'd probably be using a multi parts as well but that's for another tutorial so let's stick with tugboat now with this setup right here and i make sure that I have tugboat here which is where you can of course change your IP address and so on test easily etc etc I also want to go make a script that I'm going to call the connection starter what this script is going to do is it's going to make it really nice and easy for me to test however that I want it so let me put the connection start on here and open it up oh and also of course on the network manager we just want to give it the default prefab objects I've seen a lot of people have issues with this it does tell you exactly what to do in the console now for this connection starter I'm just going to remove all of this and I'm going to throw it into the start command so let me just have it wait till it's done loading everything from unity go and what i need to do here is i need to go grab the tugboat component and start the server connection if i am the main editor and if i'm not the main editor which means i'm a peril sync clone which i'll get to showing you that in a second you'll get the idea but what i can then just do here is i can just say private tugboat and that's of course in fishnet transporting tugboat and we can just say underscore tugboat like that and then in here we can run a little if statement saying if peril sync dot clones manager dot is clone we only want to start the connection as a client and if not that means we want to start it as a server and a client so i can go grab tugboat dot start connection and then here you need to say whether you want to start it as a server or not so in here we want to use both true and right after we just want to do false and up here we want to throw in the false as well there we go so we start as just as client up here now this is really all we need in the connection starter and of course all we need to do now is just also serialize the tugboat you could either you know make it public plop it in there whatever since we know i'm i'm going to put it on the network manager i'm just going to do a if try get component out tugboat and i'm just going to call it t then I'm going to say underscore tugboat equals to underscore T. And then if we don't get it, I just want to run a debug.log error. Couldn't get tugboat. And just reference this and we can just return. Now, just to go over you really quickly, the try get component is really just a better and more efficient method of get component. Of course, get component can be done in a single line. I mean, this to some extent can as well, but it's an if statement, which means it allows to fail in case the tugboat isn't there, which is really, really, really good for debugging. I use this all the time and I don't really use get component a lot unless I'm in a rush and just want to test something. So this setup is very nice. We just grab the tugboat component and then we use the tugboat component. So going right out here, because the network manager now has the connection starter, which means that when 
when we start the game, you can see the local server started and the local client has started. And now there's a remote connection as well. Now the next thing that I also always do is I go to project settings, to editor, scroll down to the bottom and this enter play mode options, I enable this. I do not enable any of these. Now there's something that's really important to be aware of, but first of all, let me try and click on play. And do you see how instant that is? Now when you click play, it starts playing immediately. The thing that's really important to keep in mind for this is that when you enable this setting, reload domain is off. That's the most important one to know of. What this basically means is if, for example, you use dictionaries, you have to clear them manually when the game stops. This can just be done on disable or on destroy, something like that, but you need to clear them manually because reload domain is what would basically clear all your dictionaries for you prior to playing, but that's no longer going to happen. So just in case you work with dictionaries, you can do that. That's the only place where I've had issues with it, but it could be in other places. Now let's also just, you know, make some spawn point. I'm just gonna say point and let's put them right in front of the camera. Camera's pointing this way and there's a point there and there's gonna be a point here. And let's just make a little player sphere, for example. Player, give it a network object so we can actually spawn it. We don't need to do anything with it. I just want to show you guys that the connections and such work. So you don't have to do this. Just going to plop this in here. And now let's get on to the parallel sync. So you're going to go up to the top, click parallel sync and click on the clones manager. And you're going to open up the clones manager. And I'm just going to drag it over here. I like to have it over here. Don't need the lighting tab. And we can click create new clone. What this is going to do is it's going to allow you to have multiple Unity editors open. This is extremely useful for, for example, something like debug. Because with multiplayer, there are different cases on different clients. Especially if, you know, one of them is a host or one of them has to act as the server and others have to act as purely just clients. So I'm now going to click on open a new editor. Also, while it's opening, one thing that's important for me to state is do not use this connection starter for production builds. That's not what it's for. This is really just a nice testing setup. For production builds, you of course want to control it in other ways. For example, how I show in my Steam setup tutorial. So we can actually just start this one now and you can see a player has spawned down here. And once this other one is open, which I have here, which you can see is underscore clone underscore zero. That's what the naming will do. And I click start. And now you can see, did I forget to add the other point? There are two players. I probably forgot to add the other point, didn't I? I didn't add any point, I think. Bonds, I didn't add any points. That's my bad. Add, add, there we go. That's the spawn point. Now, actually, you can see I just edited the scene. Now I just go over to the clone. It will tell you, hey, you can't edit stuff from here. You just click OK, reload the scene, and there we go. Now that will work. Now if I start from the main one, start from the second one, you can see, boom, now we have two instances. Now, another thing that makes this really, really easy is we're going to go back to the connection starter really quickly. And what we're also going to do is we're going to open the on enable and on disable function. Now, we need to subscribe to an event on the instance finder, which is part of just the fishnet namespace. Dot client manager dot and then on client connection state. And then let's just say, let's just call it on client connection state. Now, what this needs is you can actually, if you just hold alt and press enter, I'm pretty certain that Visual Studio can do the same thing. You can actually ask it to create a method for you, which we can just put here. Or let me put it, let me put it after both of the on disable and on enable. This takes in some client connection state arcs. If it didn't generate it automatically for you, you can just write this line. That's all you need, really. Just open that as a method. Now, these arcs are pretty much what happened to the connection. So, what we're doing up here is we're subscribing to some action saying, you know, trigger this once a client's connection state has changed. So that can be, you know, that the player is connecting or is finished connecting or is stopping his connection or completely stopped his connection. So what we want to do here is we're going to say if state is equal to and then the connection state of type stopping. That means that, you know, we're disconnecting for one or the other reason, whether we're disconnecting ourselves or the server is disconnected or we're being kicked or whatever. We just want to stop Unity from playing. And then you write Unity editor dot editor application dot is playing equals to false. This means that it will just stop it from running automatically. So let me just go show you how that works. But the last thing that we got to do while we set up the on disable is we just got to unsubscribe from it as well. So this plus equals is how you subscribe to actions and events that you can subscribe to like this. And the minus is how you unsubscribe again. It's just always important to do that because otherwise you can cache things that you don't want cached. Now let's go back to our two editors here and let me put one in the one side and the other in the other side. So if we just do this, you can see this should now be the host. So this one will just start its connection. This one will open its connection as well and be connected. And you can see as soon as we stop the server, the client will also stop because he lost connection connection and immediately stop. And this is pretty much my whole testing setup. Of course, this is a bit of a mess. It can all be cleaned up a whole lot, but I think this is really going to improve on your testing a lot and your general development speed. That's what this setup is for, is just to have this super clean, very quick setup, both with the folders to be able to just work from and have it neat and tidy immediately. And also just having this connection started, just I know it doesn't seem annoying to have to press these buttons and so on, but trust me, in the end, and the more you work with it, the more frustrating it can be. And of course, this connection starter just creates a good route for you to expand from when you add more functionality. Just keep in mind that this connection starter should under no circumstances be network behavior, purely based off of the fact that if it's a network behavior, it's a network object and network objects are not spawned before the server is there. And well, you know, the connection starter is the same place as the server, which is obviously not a good thing. Then it wouldn't exist and it would get very angry at you. 
So yeah, that's pretty much it. I think this is about my whole testing setup. And I just really hope that this helped make your game development more effective and make it all, you know, a smoother process. So overall, please do comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.